Bonjour mesdames et messieurs, in this episode I want to show you how you can do fantasy cityscapes. Bonjour mesdames et messieurs, my name is Serge Ramelli. I'm a French photographer from the amazing city of Paris. Right now I'm traveling through Africa in this amazing blue train. But in this episode I want to show you how you can create a complete fantasy cityscape. I set myself a challenge which was to mix up different photos from a photo shoot I did in Paris a couple of weeks ago. And I'm going to show you how in Photoshop you can blend all that to get this result. Don't forget to download the source files. I'm giving you the 46 million raw files that you're going to be using for this cityscape so you can follow along, but you can also create your own version and you can even post it on social media. I'm going to give you all the instructions there. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking the little subscribe button and hit the little bell so you get a notification every time I make a video. Mesdames et messieurs, let's do it. All right, guys, so I'm excited to share this tutorial with you. Um, I, I've been challenging myself uh, for the last days to create fantasy composites of cityscapes. A lot of people do landscape and, you know, I, cityscape is kind of my thing and I want to do it. And the challenge was to basically mix different photos that I shot about two, three weeks ago in Paris and come up with something, you know, fresh and, and new. And this is what we're going to do. That's the final result, which is basically the gates of the Louvre opening it to Notre Dame. It's completely fake. Uh, but we'll play around with it and I will show you how to do this uh, in just a second. So let's go back. I always start in Lightroom. Lightroom is kind of like, you know, the place where I, I always start. I created a collection called Composites where I put all the photos that I'm going to be using for, you know, for this challenge. And so um, the way I work on this is I start in Lightroom and I do some basic retouching. So that's the gate of the Louvre, how, how it was, it was early morning. And so on this one, I'm just going to do a basic retouching. I'm going to open up a bit of shadows, bring down the highlights. I know I want to make it dark, so I'm going to bring down a lot of the highlights, um, something like this. And um, I want to, uh, I'm going to fake it. So I'm going to add a lot of blue to make it like if it was nighttime. And I want to uh, go to the... Um, Transform up right click on auto to make it straight. Okay, and it's not really well centered I'm gonna make this uh, at the uh, of the Instagram format because I'm, I'm making this for Instagram and Instagram format is 4 by 5 so uh, Here is that's 4 by 5 and uh, I'm gonna crop it in a way That's gonna make sense for Instagram Something like this no, I, I need this to be bigger. Yeah, I just wanted to center it a little bit more. Okay. Yeah, something like that. Ah, I don't know how I did it. I think, you know what? I think at the end, I, uh, I actually cropped it a little different because I want this to be centered. Yeah, I made it not quite Instagram, but something like this. But it's still, you know, it's still like a, a long format. Okay, so that's the basic idea, and I added blue, I just did some basic things on it, and now I want to add some light. So to add some light, I'm going to take, I'm going to zoom in here, and uh, zoom in here, I'm going to take a circle, I'm going to make a little circle here in the lamp, okay, and I'm going to invert it, feather it, and I'm going to add some yellow and I'm going to get some exposure. I mean, this is a complete fantasy thing, you know, so it's completely fake. Okay. I like that. I'm going to right click. Uh, okay. Come on. Right click on it. Right click duplicate and the duplicate. I'm going to put, I'm going to put here. Oops. No, nope. I'm having a hard time this morning. It's okay. Come on here, voila. And so you make one that's very strong over the lamps, you know, and then you right click, you duplicate it. And the next one, you make it a lot bigger, but a lot less stronger because it's going to look fake otherwise. So I'm going to zoom out. Usually what I do is I make a very long one like this. And right now you see it's looking very fake because it's too strong. So I'm going to lower the exposure a lot. 
something like this maybe put a bit less yellow okay I like that I'm going to duplicate this voila I like that I'm going to duplicate this again and I'm going to make one last which is going to be like a small circle for the reflection on the floor okay I'm going to duplicate this something like this okay and you can see right away it's kind of cool before after all right so now that I have my light um, the bottom part of the photo is way too bright so I'm gonna make um, I'm gonna take a gradient and I'm going to darken the bottom of the photo voila because uh, I know I want to I want to have a really uh, you know night feeling and uh, now it's time to go into Photoshop so I'm gonna right click edit and very important I'm gonna open it as a smart object in Photoshop because to be able to match both photos I still want to be able to develop it in camera Raw, which is the same thing in Lightroom so by keeping it as, as a smart object it's still a raw file I can still change the white balance and I can make the photo match way better okay so we're here in Photoshop I'm gonna go back to Lightroom and I'm gonna work on the next image which is going to be um, this view. This is the view that I had from a hotel I rented in Paris, which was amazing. It's called the Citadine Saint-Germain-des-Prés, if you want to go check. And, and, and for free, they gave me this view, which is a lot more expensive usually. Uh, but it happens to be a hotel. So, you know, all, all I'm doing is, you know, opening the shows, blah, blah, blah. And this one, I, I want to bring it a lot magenta. Uh, like I have a nice ni night feeling about it. Yeah, maybe warming up a bit. And I like it, so I'm going to right-click, edit, and open as a smart object in Photoshop. So now in Photoshop, we have three things. We have this uh, photo that we just opened, this one that we just opened, and they are smart object. What does it mean, smart object? It means that if I double-click on it, it opens camera row, and I can change the white balance. You know, nothing is written in stone. I can click OK, and it's going to refresh. So um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to have to make a cutout to be able to place that photo and I'm going to work on that right now and uh, the way I do the cutout I try different things and what worked the best was to use the pen tool so I'm going to press P for pen tool or click here and the way the pen tool works and I give you a trick you zoom it at 300 percent 300 percent if you want to be precise and then you use the space bar to move around your photo and I'm going to speed this up but I'm going to start here okay uh, P for pen tool and at 300%, I just click and follow the different lines and the shape of the wall. And then you can, you know, make big clicks like this. And, it, you know, it's just a great way, Pumzi, if you, you know, if you were outside. And you, you're better off getting a little bit into the wall than being outside. It's going to avoid to have a hello. But because you are at 300%, it's just, you know really precise when I started the photography I used to work for my buddy Kelvin and he used to train me on Photoshop that was 15 years ago and he was working for a fashion show and he used to give me models that I had to uh, you know use a pen tool on and I was at 300 percent and it was kind of cool and then, and then he would change the background usually I used a quick select a brush a command Z to undo but is this time or you can also press command V and you can just move the last uh, you know the last point that you did okay so uh, you can make you know big stripe long stripe and also I'm gonna make a game with you guys is that um, I'm gonna give you all the source files and at the end I'll show you but you can create your own version of this photo with all the source file and post it on Instagram and you tag me with three friends and then I will uh, uh, basically look at the photo so now uh, look you see we're coming to uh, some like um, there was some metal things so I'm, I'm I'm only focusing on the metal things I'm not focusing so much on on the leaf you know and it, I'm zoomed in so much that you know you won't be able to really see something okay now when it comes to a curve the trick is you click and you drag and you until the line follows the curve okay it's pretty easy you click and you drag until the lines follow the curve and if it doesn't want to follow the curve then you make you you drag furthermore usually it works you see it works perfect here and because I'm at 300% this is very precise okay I'm gonna speed this up 
so that you don't have to see me doing all this, but you get the idea. Uh, this one up, Command Z. So when you come from a curve, it's good to finish with a curve and you can move this around with uh, Command. I'm pressing the Command, which I believe is a control key. And then when it comes back to small details, you just can click around them like this. It's kind of cool to get all these small details. It's going to look even more realistic. And you see it has a little bit of a fringe, a blue fringe. So I'm trying to uh, go behind the fringe, you know. And it only takes a few minutes to do it. I mean, it's some work, but it's it's going to be the key point of this shoot. Uh, the key point to make it work. So again, when you come close to this, you know, you just make sure you go around this. You need to, uh, you know, to take them into consideration. But usually it's just one click, like one click on the on on the top of uh, this sort of spike and then one click there and I'm, I remember guys I'm at 300% I am zoomed in so much that it's it's unreal so I want to move that once length so command key voila make sure it's right and you know even if it's not precise it's going to look awesome so you see the trees which are here, I don't take them into consideration. I just cut, I really cut out just the door. It's it's a, it's a beautiful door. It's the door to enter the Louvre when you're coming from the Pont des Arts. It's amazing. And you see, I'm going to cut out here exactly there where the sidewalk here. Now, we're going to have a problem with that, but we're going to erase this later on. Uh, you will see. I've tested this and this kind of worked. This kind of worked. Okay, so when you're coming to the end, all you have to do is click on the first point, right click, make selection, make sure there's no feathering. I want zero feathering. I want a precise cut. And now I have a selection. I have a precise selection of this door and I can click here on a mask and it's going to mask it out. Oh. It masked the wrong way. The, all you have to do is press Command I to invert, and now we got a great cut out of that door. Okay, so I'm going to bring in the uh, this raw file. So I'm going to click and drag on it with the Move tool, and position it here, and um, and uh, now we can actually make this on top here. I'm going to put this photo here on top, and then I can move around this photo to position uh, Notre Dame where I want it. Something like this. I think kind of looks cool. Uh, I think it's a little um, it's a little crooked. So I'm going to press Command T. I'm going to rotate. Oops. Command T. Uh, I'm going to rotate Notre Dame. I can make it slightly bigger. It's a rough. I mean, it's, it's a smart object, so it's going to work. So it fills in more of the screen. Now you see the colors don't match at all, and I kind of did that on purpose to show you the advantage of using smart objects. Uh, you know, the photo it, it just doesn't match. So this is uh, you know a lot more magenta. The colors are you know not the same. So I can just double click here, and because it's a raw file, I can just add a lot more magenta. Maybe maybe even make it warmer like this, uh, just to make it match. And it's great because it's white balance. You know. Uh, maybe add some uh, vibrant because it's the other one is very colorful and some saturation and press ok and you'll see right away it's going to match uh better but we'll do we'll do more matching stuff but that's just you know the base of getting these two look at that now it matches way better okay so um i want to add one more photo so i go back to lightroom and that's because i need a i need a little barrier i don't you call it a little fence sorry so I got this photo, which I which I already retouched, use you know just basic retouching where there is this fence here, and I thought they would this would be the perfect fence. It's even got a lamp there and everything. I kind of like that. So I'm gonna right click, edit, open a smart object in Photoshop, and same thing here. I'm gonna make a cutout with using the pen tool. Uh, of this beautiful, uh, uh, you know, fence. So I'm going to pen tool, and uh, I don't know. I'm going to maybe take uh, from here. So remember, you zoom in Z for zoom in. 
You gotta see 300%. See here, it says 300%. P for pen tool. And c'est parti, mon kiki. Now, on this one, everything that's in there, I'm gonna leave it because actually it matches. Because if you look at it, it's the same kind of lamps. It's the fam famous Paris lamps. Les lampadaires de Paris. And, uh, and some uh, trees, which exactly is what on top of Notre Dame. So it actually works. Um, I'm just going to cut it out here. Okay. And on in this one, I'm going to go in the dirt. Uh, you see that there's dirt there. I'm going to cut out straight in the dirt. Voila. R and then right click. Make selection. Make sure it's zero pixel. Create a mask. Okay, and now we have a precise cutout of this with a lamp. And this raw file, remember it's still a raw file, so I can still change the color. I, I'm going to put it over our, oops, here. So uh, here it is, and it's too small, so I'm going to basically, I'm going to zoom out, press Command T, and make my raw file bigger until. This matches completely the size that I want. Sometimes you really have to, yeah, I want to make it big enough so that it matches there. Okay. And uh, let me see here. I'm going to position this under here. So it goes behind. It's already masked out. See, we have a problem with this that we're going to solve, but that kind of work. Now, the color is not exactly the same. It's too yellow. But remember, it's a raw file, so I can double click on it. And I can change the raw file. I can change, I can make it even more blue and add even more magenta and maybe take some vibrance out and press OK. I don't care about the rest of the photo. I care, all I care is the color of this. I, I wanted sort of to match uh, this, you know, this wall somehow. So it's, it's going to update the raw files. Yeah, it's better, but I, th you know, we know we have a lot of blue there. I think we need, uh, we need, um, I, t I think I made too much blue, so let's add back some yellow. Let's add, let's actually add a lot of yellow to see and some a lot of magenta, and may maybe just desaturate the whole thing. The whole photo looks weird, but I'm I'm all only caring about this little part here. Okay, the color is right, but it's too bright, way too bright. So I'm gonna make this darker. Double click on it and just make it darker. Wow. And I think I want to take some, I think it's a little too yellow now. It's kind of like a trial and error process, but because it's a smart object, you can just go back and forth and go back and forth and go back and forth. And that's kind of really cool. Okay, and you need to also look at it from far. Yeah, now it's too dark again. So again, as I said, trial and error process. So I'm just going to make it a bit, I just went to extreme. The first time I did it, I nailed it the first time. Uh, maybe, yeah, shadows are already open. Maybe don't. I'm gonna open. I'm gonna make the highlights a bit brighter, because there was a lot of highlights around the. You see here, we have a lot of highlights. I'm trying to, to make it match. And don't worry, there is as the techniques because I'm gonna do an overall color correction at the end to sort of make everything blend together. Because that's the only way to really make this work is to add a, another retouching on top of it. Okay, that's good enough for me now. And. Um, I am ready to do. Uh, I am ready to do some final retouching. But first, I gotta get rid of these two things here. So the way that you to do that at this point, I have to go out of the uh, raw format. And but I'm kind of happy with the color, so I'm just gonna right click. Uh, sorry, here on this part here, and rasterize layer, and that's gonna make a JPEG into it. And then uh, I can. Um, I'm just gonna make this very simple. I'm going to take. Usually, what I do is I take the spot heating brush tool here. And I just brush this thing away. You can't do that on the raw files, but you can do it here. Look, it did a great job. You see, this is very magenta. The colors don't match here so much. So uh, I need to add a lot more magenta to this one. That's fine. Let's do that one more time. Okay, it's not really doing it. That's fine. We, we're going to do an overall correction to to uh, to uh, to do this. So uh, let's zoom out here and let's blend all of that together. 
So for that, I'm going to make a series of color correction. And what I like to use the most is uh, basically create. Um, uh, well, first, usually what I do is I, I use curve. I, I take a curve and uh, I go and I think on this one, I'm just going to make it. I'm going to make the overall photo a little bit brighter. And I always make a curve for different things. So that's one curve for brightness. OK, then I'm going to make another curve for contrast. So contrast, you make a S curve like this. Voila, so I did a curve for contrast. And now, yeah, contrast is too much, too much. So I'm just, I went, you have to go very light on the contrast, but I just wanted a bit of contrast. And now I'm going to make another one. So it, you have different possibilities. One thing I like to do sometimes, instead of using a curve, I can go to, uh, sometimes what I like to use is use the color balance. Now, color balance is kind of cool because you can really play around with things. So I'm going to go for the, for the shadows first. So it's only looking at the dark tones, and I can add some cyan in the shadows or some red. I think on this one I'm going to add a bit of red. Okay, and um, and this one, and then just play around. I think I want to add a bit of greenish in the shadows and maybe a bit of yellow like this. Okay, this is still shocking me, but we'll see if we can correct it. A bit later on, I think I'm just going to desaturate this thing. Okay, now I'm going to go to the midtones, midtones, midtones. Let's see here. Maybe add a bit of cyan. I just move them around and see what I like. You know, that's all I do. Okay, I like that. And then go into the highlights, and you completely change the color of the photo, and you sort of blend everything when you do that. Kind of like that. And uh, I think I went a little too green here. Something like this. Let me show you before and after. So bal color balance. See, it gives a, an overall thing. And this is, now this shocks me a bit less, but this is a, a still, I think, a little uh, too dark and too saturated. So it's still a raw file. So I, it's funny because the first time I did, I, 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 I trained on this, I did not have this issue. It just went really fast. So I'm going to make it brighter. And I'm just going to take some vibrance out even more and make it may maybe a little more yellow and even more magenta. And the overall photo looks horrible, but I'm just looking at this one piece here. And by taking out color, because I've got a color balance on top of it, it's just going to blend everything. And uh, <clears throat> usually what I do uh, sort of to finish it off, uh, finishing it off is, you know, usually what takes the most time. Okay, so... Wow, that's way better. Now, I'm going to look at my reference image. My reference image is this. The first time I tried it, you see I went on complete different colors. Uh, but, you know, every time I do this, this project, I do different colors. But that's that's why it's a challenge. And that's why I'm giving you the source files because everybody's going to make something different. And uh, I'm going to explain. I actually like this version too. It's more yellow. It's lighter. But I really like that version too. Usually what I, what I, I end up doing next is some kind of dodge and burn. And I love to do dodge and burn in camera row. So I press command alt shift E to create a photo. It's kind of like the final thing, a photo that takes into account everything that we've done so far. Whoa, what, I, oops, sorry. Command Z, I did it at the wrong, you have to go all the way to on top of all your layers, command alt shift E. So it takes into account everything that you've done so far. So here I am. And then I go to filter. Camera fill because I'm so in love with Lightroom and I'm so used to the camera. I love to do my dodge and burn there. I mean, there's other ways to do it, but I love to do it. So, for example, I think this is too bright. So I'm going to take a little brush and uh, I'm going to go to minus exposure and uh, maybe make my brush a little smaller. Uh, size a little smaller maybe smaller. Make sure when you do dodge and burn that like flow and density is in the 70s. Uh, it's, it was a good year. That's when I was born. Just kidding. And you see, I'm making this darker. But now I'm brushing on everything. You see, uh, I'm brushing on everything and it's influencing everything. And here we have a bit of a, a, of a color issue. So I'm going to add some yellow. See, you see, I'm adding some yellow there because it's too much sort of red or something. So, okay, I'm going to break a new brush. Same thing here for the bottom. I want to make this a little bit darker, maybe, and take out some saturation of this. There's some color there. Well, too much saturation. I took too much saturation and too dark, but just a little bit. 
you know, and to just sort of dodge and burn it and, you know, make it awesome. I could, you know, in one version, I wanted to add the moon, but I kind of like that. It's just a small thing. Uh, yeah, I think it, this photo really works. And you can also, I can, this is when you can give it an, like an overall color cast even more. I can go, I, I went very blue the first time I did it, something like this, blue and some sort of magenta and added even more contrast, you know, and bring down the highlights a little bit. Uh, something like this. That's I did something. Like, you can play around, or you can go, you know, much more yellow. Just how you want it, you know. Really, it's how you want it. Final touch is all about your own personal taste. And if you don't like it, you can start over. I'm not sure I really like what I did. I actually like what it, how it was before. Or you can mix it up, you know, lower the opacity and sort of do a, an in-between thing. Anyways, I love doing this type of exercise. I think it's a very creative way to create art. And uh, so here's the idea. Please uh, download the source files that come with it so you can follow along. Do your own retouching. I give you the authorization to post it on Instagram, but please tag me at add photo search so I can see it and tag three other photographer friends, anybody you want, which are, if they can be photographers, tag them on your post. This way I can see it and they can also see what you're doing. And the best I will post, I will actually, anyone who does a good job, I will post it in my stories. And the one who really does something really cool, I'm going to post it on my Instagram. I got 70,000 followers. It can bring you some followers. All right. I hope you like this, guys. And I will see you in another video. Let's look at it again. Uh, let's look at the two versions. So that's version today. That's the version I did yesterday. You know, same ideas, same techniques, uh, different uh, retouching. But voila, um, this photo is doing really well on social media. So I guess people really liked it. Uh, have fun. All right, guys, I hope you like this. Don't forget to download the source file so you can follow along. Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel by clicking the little bell and the subscribe button. And I will see you in another video.